So basically, this is just breaking down um, the start of the tax and the tag and the content inserted in between them will show. So as you see right here, you hit a one tag and you have the content, your paragraph tag, and your content and paragraph, and you have your break. And just going through and showing that portion right here. This part right here, what you guys go through and really look into, um, we're not going to kind of skip over this part because I'm expecting you guys to kind of know a little bit of this. So let's go to, and this is attributes. Attributes are basically hrefs. Like how image has its source, um, or you have the width, the height, even style is the attribute. Your alt, which would be really good if you're doing anything on the lines with actually, um, you know, like if if it basically if if you want search engines to index your image and to be able to understand what image you need to put your alt text and actually be able to put what's in your alt text, or if the image does not show for someone who has the image not shown, so they can be able to understand what the image is about. So it's pretty good to do that. And then you have your style, which then you can color stuff that get that gets to a whole nother thing in CSS that we won't worry about in this video, because this video is only for HTML. And then you can do your language too as well. So we kind of can know what language is here and present. So different um people like Google could be able to understand it better. So let's go back through here and just actually update that. Go to our HTML. English United States. And come over here, you just see. Oh, you see that nothing really changes because that's something else, but you see it's right here. Um, your paragraph title, this is a tool tip. So let's go look at it. Um, let me get to the file. Let's do it on this one. You see that? And pop up. Basically, if you see pop up at least right here. So basically, if you want to get a little information when someone over her over over her or something, you just put title and then now create a little tool tip that will pop up like this. And basically HTML, you see that um you didn't click this right here, you need to add the um, quotation on attributes values. See or it messes up. So make sure you add the quotations onto the attributes value. Single quotes, double quotes, attribute values, double quotes are around attribute values are most common, but single quotes can be used, as you can see. So, um, and some things you're going to see that some of the, like, if you actually have something that has quotes in it, then you need to vice versa. So, it, so make sure that it doesn't basically, if you were to put quotes here, quotes here, it basically would start here, stop here, then this right here, and then something else would start here. And I want to read it right. So, open one. So do if you have single, you have um, double quotes in it, do that. And then this is some other ones too as well, like disable href ID, which is used to identify. Um, you can identify element, source, style, title, alt, any of those things. Right, here. disable will now allow this input to element should be disabled, so it doesn't work. So if you're trying to show something, or something that someone cannot change, then that's something you should put there. So we go back to our headers as we did before. You can add styling on here, font size that's more for CSS. And then right here, we're gonna add something else too. Right here, you have a meta chart. This is gonna tell you how your characters are going to be seen and are gonna be put together and actually work. So let's add this to ours right here. Shouldn't do much of a change on this one, but it is something you should add so you don't have any problems later. And then they have exercises. I think you guys should walk through to test yourself on each section. And then you have paragraphs. Do your paragraphs. You can put anything you want to inside of it. And you can see, like if we go over to here, no matter how you really space it up, it comes out the same. Um, they're, they're not going to allow you know you to space space it out. You have to do something else, like break or something else, or put space in there certain ways to actually do that using CSS. So you're not going to be able to just put a whole bunch of spaces and then do that. Because basically, it's only going to take one space. There is another way, but I don't really think that one is the best way to do. So, your styles, different things on that now right there tag name, styles, 
and what a property value you want to change, how it looks. And then you have your HTML formatting. So this is your bold text. Remember, when you open it, you have to close it. You have your strong text. Um, you have your italicized text. Um, this is emphasized text, mark text, small text, um, delete text. Um, then you have your insert text, script text, superscript text, different stuff along that lines right there. You basically have everything you really need for this portion, how you can write it out, and how it can show. Like, let's go through and look at the, the deleted text. As you see, it goes through and it crosses it back out. So basically, people can see what has been removed. Quotations. Basically, quote text, as you can see, like block quotes, kind of have it automatically quoted for you. So if you need to quote something and you don't want to use the your own quotations, if you use the Q tag, then it will go through and quote what you have in there. And then to it, well, once you get further in depth, you can have certain styling for the Q deck so that all your quotes come out the same and in a style last stylistic approach. It's pretty cool. You can go through and do that, um, but it's something we'll talk about probably in another video. Comments we talked about before. Um, basically, you have one type of comment. You can write multiple lines of comments on this right here. So like this one, you can be multi-line. You can comment out different things, comment out this portion, do tons of things. And then let's go into CSS and how you link right here. Images, tables, as you see. And then you can do your tables and you can see how, how that is formed. Let's go through and actually do a small table. And basically this is a style for the width to make it 100% so it go across the whole page. So let's go down here. Let's add a header 4. And just do this is a table. And basically your table, you have your table, which wraps around everything. And then you have your table row, but that's what TR stands for table row. And table row is going to be this portion right here. So this whole row going across. So each each one of these rows will have a, have a row. And once we get into PHP, we will show how to automatically fill those. So you can have them rip out from the, from the database. Table row, and this is your table, table header, TH, table header, this top portion up here. And then you have right here, um, your table data and this is this data right here that goes across for each section and we can see exactly how it looks on ours and since we don't have any styling on all on ours this is how it comes out in the basic styling right here but once you added more styling you could do more like if we were to go back into here and then we were to um, kind of copy this styling because you can do you can do inline styling styling on the page or you can import the styles so we were to come back here and then inside of our header Then we come back to here. Our page was styled differently. And basically, if I walk you through kind of what styling they have on here, um, basically all it is is that the table, which is the whole table, it chooses the font family. So what font is it actually going to be? Um, the border collapse. So basically um, makes the border as small as possible without all too much extra padding. The width, which is the same as we have here, which means that technically you really could take this inline styling out of this and still look the same. Um, and then you have your table data, so your TD. And if you use a comma, then you can add another one to put the same thing. Table data, you put your border, what color. This is the size of your border. Um, this is the, um, it's going to be a solid line, and this is the color. And this is your text align, so all the text align to the left. And then the padding around these right here. And then it's right here, you have, you have that basically um, on your table rows, which are all of these right here. That, that for every chow of, of this one, so basically every every chow of the table row, um, you will have the, um, so basically see every chow right here, which would be the table data, um, the background of all the even, so you have even right here, which says that every even, so two, three, two, three, two, four, six, all these right there will have that in there. So basically every even one will have um, 
uh, actually we have the background of this. So you can do some com some complex stuff inside CSS to basically do some pro pro programmatic styling, as you can see. And that's how you get that. So let's exit out of this, this, come back here, and we have our table. We already talked about lists and stuff like that. We already went through our order list, all those right there. And you can literally take the list style type and make it none, which will basically remove, as you see right here, which will remove any of the extra portion right here, the actual list elements, or you can change it up, or you can create your own. There's tons of stuff you can do. HTML blocks, so divs. And as you see, block level elements in HTML address all these different things, like there's tons of them right there. Inline elements are all of these, which will line up right next to each other unless you style it differently. Um, tons of stuff right there. Let's go ahead and do some divs. This is what you're going to put all this information into. This would be a good way to group elements. So I use I, I use divs, and then I use um I use divs, and then I do a whole bunch of divs for one element, and then I put all the elements that's in the same section into sections. And you have your divs, and these don't show up on different lines, as you see. And you have them right down here, hello world, and they're on different lines. And this goes more into all that right there. This is a section that you need to read if you really want to go more in depth into this. I really, really recommend going through and reading this right here and understanding exactly what this does right here. But this is going to be a big building portion. Classes are basically um, groups of, this is more for CSS, but basically um, are just groups of how you can sign something up. So if you want all, so if say you have a, a group of a list of cities. And you want every single city to look the same, so you'll make a class for that. And that class will, it will incorporate the same styling for each one of those cities. HTML IDs, these are for specific IDs, so if you're trying to um, be able to find one element very quickly, this is how you do that. Um, the next thing is iframes, which is basically like another website inside of here, so it has an index and everything like that. So that's another part of that portion. Then you have JavaScript, which we'll do something else different. I don't know if we're going to touch much on JavaScript. Maybe we might do that later on. But in this introduction class, if you see it in there, then we have we did go through it. Um, file paths, how you do path files. Um, basically, you have just if the if the picture is located in the same folder as the current page, is located the image in the current folder. Um, if the picture is located in the image folder at the root of the current web. Um, if the picture is located in the folder one level up from it. So you can see how to do this. This is a good way to do this. A lot of people have problems with this. You have head. This is your head files up here. And you can do all them stuff, like what stuff you can put in here, your metadata. So this is this is defines, this right defines the character set you use. Right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually find the character that's used. This right here is to find the description. So in a lot of times you will see that the actual web browsers, I mean not web browsers, but um, different search engines will use these to go about to go about actually displaying the content and the information. So just kind of find the, the web page. And then then I'm going to put this one on here. And then the next one right here is to find keywords for a search engine. Uh, this is not really used much by search engines as much. They do, they do might take them to kind of see if you're telling it to help them out a little more, but they don't really use it as much as they used to. So I really recommend, and you can still put these in there. I recommend just put them in there just because, um, because you never know if they're going to use them or not. No one really actually knows exactly what the search engine is looking for. But it's a good practice to keep doing this right here, and because I'm not gonna lie, marketers kind of ruin everything. I am a marketer myself too as well, um, but marketers usually do stuff over and over to 
basically to drive traffic and to get more money. And basically that's why um, most search engines don't use this currently right now. But I still recommend doing it just for practice sakes. Then you have the author, so basically the author of the page. So if you do like an article or something like that, so I can quickly identify it. Author the page, author the page. Um, I'm not, so for a little bit, Google did do something on the lines of like a Thor. So basically, like a Thor Raj authors. So basically, when they was pushing Google Plus a while ago, um, basically you can have a Google Plus page or Google your Google page as the author, and then it will kind of build your authority or push your authority up to as well. So when they seen that this was written by this art, this this author. About these topics because they would they knew exactly kind of what authors were kind of um, big figures over certain topics based on what they wrote consistently and how those pages how those stuff did um, they would give more credit to it so when that comes up in the search engine you will get a boost and you get pushed up more but from my understanding this is not done as much it is a little bit affected but not as much as it used to be either as you see most of your stuff is not as much as it used to be and this is basically refresh document every 30 seconds this is if you want the basically the page to keep refreshing over and over. If you have like a um, something like updating on the page and you want to keep refreshing that part over and over. Some interesting use right there. So like if we come through here and we put this in there, and I'm gonna update the document, and you're gonna see that this document is gonna refresh by itself with stuff that's not on it. Oop, put this in there. Okay, and you see that basically that's majority of the things right there. And these are examples of the metas right here. This is a good section of the main ones that um, you will be kind of using. And you need this this viewpoint right here if you want the viewpoint of all all your web pages to look the same. So when you have stuff style, it can look not like this on the page, but like this. So your image on on your regular page doesn't take up the whole section. But when it hits a smaller screen, it will because um, it is big enough to do that. So I recommend putting that right here. So this is meta viewpoint. This is going to control how the browser scales and shows a lot of the stuff gives the instructions for it. Okay. Yeah. We don't really have anything on here that, that, that would do that as much. But yeah, you get the kind of point right there. So let's go through right here and let's test out that portion right there. Let's refresh this. And then we're gonna, then you will see this right here. Work. And the first content should go through, and it should refresh this content after about 30 seconds. So I'm gonna keep this up. We're gonna go through some other things while this is doing this, and when we come back, we should set this page kind of refreshed on this portion right there. Um, if you did it right, but sometimes browsers don't act, don't take it sometimes, but it should work how it's supposed to. And as you see, it just did the content refresh. So basically, this is really good if you have a page where you're not really entering data in, but you need to keep it refreshed, and the page is gonna be updating on a regular basis. Um, like when they do like something on ESPN and they're doing sports news and they want the page to refresh faster, this is a good way to do it to keep the page to refresh and people can keep getting information so they can sit on the page and they can see the, the stats and everything update on that. So next thing we have layout. So the HTML layout examples, as you see right here, you have a header, navigation, section, section, a side, which is like your um, sidebar and everything like that, and kind of that stuff. This would be go more into when we go to CSS, when we use Bootstrap, we go more into this. That's responsive. Um, Tiffany throws on this line, we don't really worry about. 
And basically, this is going to be in the tutorial right here. And then this gives a little bit of X, X, XML. So basically, guys, what I want you guys to do, if you if you didn't get, you don't get it, you have this course right here. You went through it, and I kind of went through a lot of the brief portion. But I want you guys to go through and head over to W3 School and walk through all of this right here. This will give you a good baseline um, on everything that's right here.